Now guys, this is a must-see floor. If you're a startup or you've been in business for a, a little while, you must understand the difference that an innovative business model can bring to your business. If there's one vlog I want you to check it out, it's this one. Because I, I, I've been studying Tesla and Nikola for a while, and the main difference between those two companies is their business model. And Nikola CEO have shown how genius his mindset is uh, when it comes to business. Henry Yakarundi, the innovator behind the innovative company. entrepreneur from Rwanda. Grand plaisir d'accueillir aujourd'hui Henri Nyakarundi. Pour en parler, l'équipage reçoit son concepteur, Monsieur Henri Nyakarundi. Man, welcome to my new office called home. So today I want to talk to you about, you know, um, Nikola playing catch up to Tesla. Now, for those who haven't been following, man, I, I really encourage you. To, to follow and see what's going on with this company called Nikola. Um, now we all know Tesla, they've been in the game, and I'm not gonna talk about the valuation and, and, and how they, you know, if it's, a, if it's a real company or not, et cetera, et cetera. Those are topics you can find online. But what I wanna talk about is business model, you know, the future of companies, the way business model is gonna be structured. And this is going to be the standard. I've been studying and implementing innovative business model for, for six years now. And that's been my biggest uh, uh, strength and, and, and really my biggest focus because so many people focus on technology and all, but not looking at business model to really, a business model is strong enough to adapt into downtime, uh, to, to scale up much, much quicker, especially in Africa. So let me talk a little bit about Nikolai. As of, as of today, Nikola is valued at $13 billion. And they have zero products on the ground. Now, only in America you can do stuff like this. But still, the way they've been able to structure themselves has been a game changer. So some of the early partnership joint venture Nikola has been doing is with Iveco, which is a manufacturing company to manufacture the big 18 wheel which is a European company. So they partner with them, you know, to do the manufacturing, the testing, the, the, the uh, yeah, the, the testing, the, the incorporating the engineering and all those things. That was the first partnership they do. So already you can see their mindset. They don't want to control their supply chain like Tesla is doing. This is very, very important for you to understand that. Tesla controlled the whole supply chain. Well, at least most of it. They manufacture their battery. They manufacture their cars. You know, they have manufacturing. It's a huge endeavor. So they have to raise money all the time. You know, and yes, they stock money. So they have to go public to be able to raise that kind of money. You have to be a public company. It's very difficult to raise billions and billions of dollars as a private company, right? So they, they, they really focus on that aspect. And but <clears throat> Nikola's strategy is through partnership. They have to raise partnership and 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 not just raise sorry, they, they have to develop partnership with companies that have the expertise they're looking for. So they, they all they're doing is is plugging their design or their innovation into an existing uh, a supply chain company that already have the expertise in manufacturing, that already has the expertise in testing, that already manufacture whatever products they, they, they've been doing. And that's exactly the type of things we do at ARED. We don't manufacture our kiosks, we don't manufacture our routers. Yeah, we develop some of our software, we use a lot of open source component, but it allows us to build the products much, much faster. Because if you have to acquire all that expertise, it costs a lot of money. So that's the first step that Nikola started. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the second step. So what Nikola did next, you know, they merged with Victor IQ using a special purpose acquisition company. Now, I'm not going to go into detail. I, if you, I, I'm going to put the definition somewhere on this vlog so you can learn. But going public, when you have zero revenue, very low revenue, you know, and you haven't proven yourself, it's very difficult. It's, 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 it's almost impossible. So what Nikola does, they merge with a public company. 
bam. Can you imagine you merge with a public company and you list it on the stock market? You know, that's a game changer. You no longer have to prove yourself. Uh, uh, you didn't sell, you merged. So that's a big difference. And you use an acquisition system that allow you to be listed in, in a public stock exchange. Now you can raise public money. Now you become publicly traded. So you need, if you need billions and billions of dollars, it's automatic. You don't need to build from the ground up. You know, mind you, uh, uh, they started in, a, in a 2013 or 2014. You know, so it, it, it's a very early stage. And they're just still prototyping. I mean, that's what blows my mind with those guys. If you look at the, if you look at the path that Tesla took to get to the public company, and, and the different product line they have to develop and how they have to perfect different components and the mistakes they made and all those things. Nikola does not have that learning curve because they're not developing, I mean, they're developing some of the design and all, but they're not manufacturing nothing. They're not doing anything part of their manufacturing aspect. And they went through a public listing through a merger. That to me blew my mind. And I, as I said, man, if you're not studying innovative business model companies, you're not going to go far. You're not going to go far. This idea that I see all the time of company trying to control the supply chain, control the technology, trying to have patent out of wazoo, you know, trying to have, and then they're not doing much. They're not doing anything, really. Uh, what I mean by they're not doing anything, they're just not. Uh, moving forward and now scaling quickly. Nikola is scaling at the pace never seen before because of the innovative business model. And I'm going to talk now about the third partnership, which is also what really now uh, uh, took, took, taking them to the next level. Because when you partner, it's one thing, but when you partner with a big corporation that is known in a market that have, you know, hundreds of years or dozens of years of of, of, of history and proven track record, it validates you automatically. It validates you because if that company trusts you, then you must be a good company. Or at least you must be going somewhere. And that's what Nikola has been very good at. And the merger they did, the, the one of the owner uh, the owner one of the owner of that company used to be an exec of the company they're about to partner with uh, to develop their, their pickup trucks. The Badger, which is a truck, uh, I might not buy it brand new, but if you get on the, on the used market when you drop the value, I'll definitely buy it, man. Electrical cars or trucks has been my dream. Uh, I, I, I've, I've, it's been now years, man, I've been trying to get an electrical vehicle. So check out now I'm about to post. And, and, and when I post, I want you to see this short video of the owner of uh, Nikola talking about their model right quick. Check it out. Are you anticipating the GM will always be your manufacturer? Do you ever anticipate manufacturing these vehicles on your own? No, we do not um, want to make our own, like our own truck lines. I mean, this is what GM's so good at. I mean, it's billions and billions of dollars. It's going to be built at their plant, engineered, validated, and tested with their team as well. So we get access to their entire supply chain, the team that has built some of the best programs in the world, the Silverados, the Hummers, I mean, everything. They've got the best of the best, and, and they're going to be um, building our trucks out of their plant. And that was the idea is to save Nikola billions of dollars while still being able to um, grow with someone that doesn't, that doesn't conflict with our DNA. Now, this partnership increased the value of Nikola by 50% overnight. It's the partnership they just signed with uh, GM recently. So it hasn't been even a month. Now, what GM is he going to do for Nikola? People don't understand. So Nikola also has a product line, the Badger, <coughs> the Badger, which is a semi-truck. I mean, not a semi-truck, a pickup truck. Um, fully electric pickup truck. So they're going to use GM lithium battery technology, but also GM engineering, manufacture the, the badger, testing and all the, the supply chain that needs to bring the products to life 
through GM. And what? how did they pay that? Through equity. Oh, my God. You can pay people through equity. They gave GM 11% of their company as a deal, right? And then what GM gets out of it, now they're able to commercialize their new lithium battery technology to a third-party company. But the fact that you have equity, you gave them equity, they're part of the equity, they're part of the company now. So it's a win-win situation. Why don't we use more equity, you know, as 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 a trading spot or a trading tool, you know, we're not just employees or, or, or consulting up, but we companies as a partnership tool. Now it's harder to do that in Africa, for sure. Because valuation and all those things don't play the same role as in the West. But it's still doable. It's still doable. You know, when a company you want to partner with, um, you, you also put, because if you really want to bring engagement and make sure that it's a win-win situation, if they have the stake in your company, then they want to make sure that company is successful. So there's no money exchange anymore. And the money will come later when the products go in the market. I'm sure they're going to get their cost. I'm sure they're going to get their, their share, the, 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 the revenue of that truck. And that's what the future is. Now, they're going to build a semi-truck from a third party. They're going to build their pickup truck. And I'm sure they have other product line they're going to bring on. And they're utilizing third party technology. They don't even building or developing uh, um battery system and all those things they're not doing none of that I'm, I'm pretty sure the only thing they're doing is design design their product from, from the, the design standpoint and then the manufacturing testing and all those things they don't imagine if there's a crisis they they don't deal with that crisis the manufacturing is not theirs if they have to change something or change a brand or they have to close that all they have to do is tell the company we don't want that product no more we're working on something else that's it you know, that's a very elastic, dynamic business model that allow you to sustain to any type of challenges you experience in business. Now, the only thing I can add about Nikola, I truly believe Nikola will pass Tesla as far as scalability. It's a much more scalable model uh, than, than, um, than Tesla. Now, I know we have a big fan of Tesla and, they have a cult following and all those things, and that's fine. But the the bottom line is, Nikola is catching up at a speed never seen before, right? And they're using, just because they're using innovative model. Now, is it a scam? Is it this? I see it online and all those things. That's besides the point. Obviously, GM is taking a stake of that company, so they must have done some due diligence. They must have done some research, you know? It doesn't mean that it's all perfect, but hey, if I have to bank today between Tesla and Nikola, I'll pick Nikola, man. Because unless Tesla change their business model to even, because they, they have an edge, then I don't see them uh, moving as quickly as Nikola. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Put some comment below and subscribe, man. You know, share the content if you like it, of course. If you don't, well, you know, <laughs> you ain't got to do nothing. All right, take care.